Tell me a little bit about yourself and your involvement in IoT. I'm Jurgo Preden. I'm the CEO of Thinect, and I've been doing wireless communication, wireless um, embedded systems for more than 12 years, both in okay. academia as well as in industry. Mm -hmm. So I started in, in academia as a researcher. Uh, then I moved on to industry. I started Defendec in 2006, and at Defendec I was the CTO, and we developed a wireless border patrol product there, which has been deployed in more than 15 countries. Wow. And right now there is more than a thousand devices in service protecting the country borders. I was also at Microsoft Research in the Invisible Computing Group, did some very cool stuff there. And then uh, last year we started Thinnect, where we are doing mist computing, bringing computation to the very edge of the network. Well, let's get into mist computing just a little bit more. <laughs> yes. Describe mist computing and, and contrast it to fog computing for me. Yes. So when, when fog computing brings computation from the cloud down closer to the ground, to the gateways and the routers, right. then we bring it one step further. We bring the computation all the way to the edge of the network, to the sensors, to the actuators, mm -hmm. uh, releasing the capability there or making use of the, of the computational power there right. and then adding reconfigurability so that you can, you can tailor your network based on your current needs and, and add new applications to the network at runtime. Now, why would you want to put computation more at the edge versus on the fog, which is kind of like the middle edge or <laughs> in between? But uh, it's uh, the reason why you want to bring uh, computation to the edge of the network. First of all, it's, of course, cool. It is. <laughs> but, second, <laughs> but the second thing is that um, communication is far more expensive in terms of, of uh, battery power than, uh, than computation. Interesting. So to communicate, you consume up to five times more power in an embedded microcontroller than, than just doing computation. Right, right. So by, by doing data aggregation, doing fusion, preconditioning of data at the edge, you need to communicate less data to the, to the gateway or to the router or less data to the, to the server. Mm -hmm. And this then conserves battery power as well as bandwidth. And because of these networks are also very low bandwidth, you want to conserve as much bandwidth as possible. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that. And so what type of computation then are you generally doing at the edge that you're, you know, that you're saving on this bandwidth and so forth? So <laughs> the, the computation that you do is, is very application specific. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we have, we, have, we have done as part of our research um, military sensing projects where we are, we are actually tracking vehicles and, and identifying vehicle types using very, very low-cost microcontrollers. Right on the edge, right yes, on the edge, right, edge. right on the edge of the network. So we can do, we can do acoustic, acoustic arrays, mm. uh, tracking with acoustic arrays, and also then classification using these, using these low-cost low microcontrollers. Now, are these parallelized in some way, or is it just a bunch of serial processes? For, this is parallelized in terms of, of a single, uh, single acoustic array doing the computation locally, and then the node that is doing the fusion is doing the fusion at the same time as, as another node is, is okay. doing, doing okay. the, um, the processing of the signal. So one of the actual edge nodes will be doing the fusion? Exactly. The fusion is also done in the network. Ah, okay. So this is a military example, but, but we have also deployed the same technology in, um, in smart cities. So you have smart street lights, mm -hmm. which talk directly to movement sensors. So mm -hmm. you can dim the lights when there is no movement, and you make them brighter when people are on the streets, conserving energy then. So doing the same sort of things as a smart city would do, but you're saying just moving that computation to exactly. the edge. Exactly. Because in most cases, uh, thinking in smart city is still that, that the intelligence is, is somewhere in the cloud or maybe in the fog, in, in the gateways, routers. Right. But we are able to bring it to the, to the very edge uh, creating autonomy at the edge of the network, which is important because you don't always have internet connectivity at the edge, but then also increasing efficiency. Again, as I said, the bandwidth of these networks is extremely low, so mm -hmm. you, you want to you wanna keep the, uh, the co communication local as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And then, but at some point, you're going to be communicating the results of those edge yes, com uh, yes. so the, the results of the yeah, the results of the, com uh, of the computation, the, the, de the information that is needed by the human, this is then communicated all the way to the, to the cloud. But and the information is, of course, much less than the, than the raw data that, is used, that was used to derive that information. Right, right. So then are you doing also things like uh, filtering of data, anomaly detection? Um, yes, you can, you can do all of, these, all of these different data manipulation mm -hmm. steps at the edge of the network. And, and of course, these depend on your, on your information needs of what data manipulation steps you do at the edge. So okay. you can do filtering, you can do data preconditioning. 
Uh, you can do aggregation and also then fusion and, and anything, any, any of the steps that you need. Now, if someone uh, watching this uh, video is saying, yeah, sounds like a, sounds like a good thing, um, now where, uh, where do they go to find this type of equipment? Because obviously there's a little bit more horsepower that's going to be required at the edge. You know, is this something that just can't be done with your stack? Or is it something that you, know, you need very specific uh, specifications? Actually, the, uh, the hardware that is needed for that is not special. So we are no. doing this with 8-bit microcontrollers. Uh, and this is because of historic reasons, because 14 years ago, when I initially started in that, in that area, then I started to use a certain type of, of vendor, and we are still using that vendor, but we are, we are moving away from that. But yes, you can use 8-bit microcontrollers, even 8-bit microcontrollers to do that, but of course it depends on the complexity of the, of the data processing mm -hmm. tasks that you want to do at right. the edge. So right. For example, when you're doing, uh, let's say you're doing, um, uh, in, 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 an, in a manufacturing setting, you are doing uh, predictive maintenance or, 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 or doing very, very um, accurate uh, monitoring of, of machinery. There you may need more, more computational power. You, you may need some FPGAs, you, you may need some ASICs, but for the, for the MIST principles, to, to, but to implement the MIST principles for that, you need, uh, you need very little computational power. And this is partially to the, to the reason that we have, as I said, we've started this, with this in academia. And the first, I think, five years, we worked on, on how you can do really efficient communication mm. in these low mm. bandwidth networks. Mm. Mm. How can you really... Right. This is key. I think this yes, is really a exactly. key aspect of it. If, if, the, if the communication um, aspects are limited in your network, then this is something exactly. to look at then. So because, for example, in 802.15.4, which mm. is the physical layer of Zigbee and Thread, Packet size is 100 bytes. So pushing an IPv6 packet through that, uh, which is 15 times bigger than these 100 bytes, is, is, is unreasonable. Mm. And so you, you, want to, you, want to, you, you want your communication to be a, as efficient as possible. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, of, of course, to implement this, they're going to need a special software stack, right? Yes, exactly. So right now, we are providing the, the MIST software stack mm -hmm. uh, to our partners and customers. We are planning to release that also as open source, oh. so that anybody can build mist, mist computing systems. And uh, but this will take some time because <laughs> because we, we, this is, this started as a research project and it's it's now a very very specialized chunk of software. And we are we are now in the process of creating APIs of of making this usable by anyone. Excellent. But of course, in order to in order to use the MIST principle successfully, you need a very efficient communication layer underneath. And this is also what Thinect is offering. This is part of our proprietary offering. So we have a patented clustering networking scheme, which enables efficient node-to-node -node communication in a low power uh, high number, in a low power network with high number of nodes. Well, let me understand this though. Then that's part of the networking stack that you're going to make open no, that's source? A, that's or a, uh, we, so a yes, we, are, we, we, we will make part of the, of the networking stack open source, right. which, which uh, enables mist computing. Right. So you can you can do mist computing on a small scale network mm -hmm. using any uh, routing networking software. Okay. But to do this in large scale, you need mm -hmm. something which is efficient and scalable. And Got this it. is al also something that Thinect is offering. I see. So for example, we have right now running uh, a, a, a pilot, a commercial lighting pilot with Philips in Sunnyvale, and we have 130 nodes connected to a single gateway. So the nodes are doing pre-processing at the edge and then delivering data to the gateway. And this is something you cannot do with competing technologies, right? Because these do not scale to that level. No, I like that. Well, where can our viewers find out more about what you're doing with in your company and yourself? So there's uh, a bit of information on our website, okay. www.thinec.com. Okay, I'll put that in the show notes. Excellent. And and definitely, if if there's interest, uh, anybody is welcome to contact me, and I'll be happy to share information. We have some white papers which we have created over time, describing the the differences between, between IoT and the internet, and also, also the challenges that, that, you, that, that you face in, in these wireless uh, mesh networks. Excellent, thank you. Yeah.